Thank you to each of you for joining us on the April 21st edition of The Rundown. I'm Ware Wendell, and I'm the executive director of Texas Watch. Texas Watch stands up for the rights of working families, consumers, policyholders, patients, and the public at the Texas Capitol. And we are so fortunate to be able to do this work with you and for you. I'm joined by an incredible team at Texas Watch. Christian Benavides is our digital content director, and Kelly uh, Taft is our development and operations director. And so we are doing everything possible uh, this legislative session to protect your rights at the Capitol. So I want to talk today about a number of the bills that are moving. You've heard me through the weeks talk about priorities, uh, both on offense and on defense. Now I want to talk in this rundown with you about what's happening right now with, with a lot of this legislation and really focus uh, our, our discussion today on those pieces of legislation. You may recall from the last rundown, I talked a bit about Senate Bill 11. This was the bill that was going to consolidate our courts of appeals uh, down from 14 courts all the way to, down to seven courts of appeals. Uh, that would make our courts far less connected to the communities that they serve. It would make our courts far less local, rural and urban issues would get lumped and mixed together. It's bad public policy, in our opinion, and many of you agreed. Many of you took the time to send a letter to your lawmaker through our website, texaswatch.org, saying, please do not do this. Um, now is not the time, especially right now with the pandemic. Our courts are backlogged. They've been shut down because of COVID-19. They're going to work down that backlog, but it's going to take time. They don't need to go through a reorganization or a redistricting process right now. Uh, so you pushed back and the bill author has decided to pull down Senate Bill 11. So thank you to each and every one of you who took the time to send a letter to your lawmaker. This is why we talk about the importance of people pressure on the Capitol. Lawmakers hear a lot from professional lobbyists each and every day. Um, I'm up at the Capitol often, and trust me, there are a lot of lobbyists walking the halls of the Capitol right now. And that's why it's important for them to hear from you. And this is really the role that we play at Texas Watch in helping to make sure that your voice is heard and to get you connected with the political process. So you raised your voices. You said, do not do this. We do not need to redistrict our courts right now. And, uh, and the bill author pulled down the bill. Now, having said that, we're not done on this issue because we expect the legislature will take up redistricting later in the year through a special session. Redistricting happens every 10 years with the census. And um, so they're gonna need to redistrict the House and the Senate districts, the congressional districts. They don't have to redistrict the courts. I don't think they should redistrict the courts. We do not believe that they should bring this back up. But if they do, we will be ready to oppose it again with all of the other groups who raised their voices and said, this is the wrong public policy for our state. We need to make sure that every vote is counted. We need to make sure that votes and voices are not diluted. In consolidating our courts, it would dilute those votes and those voices. And uh, so we'll be ready if this bill rears its head in the future. But thank you to each of you. Um, that's big. That's big what happened, and you helped to make it happen. Um, let's talk about the Swoop and Settle bill. This is a great bill by a great representative, Julie Johnson, state representative out of Dallas, House Bill 1793. Remember, this is the bill that cuts down on predatory insurance swoop and settle schemes. This is when you've been in a wreck and you get a phone call. Uh, it can be within days of the wreck happening. It's the insurance company for the at-fault driver saying, hey, we're so sorry what happened. We know our guy's at fault. We want to make it right. Uh, can we get some money to you? Can we, um, can we get you $5,000? Will that take care of you? And uh, a lot of people are desperate. They're not thinking clearly after the wreck. Uh, they're trying to figure out how they're going to get back to work, how they're going to get a rental car, 
uh, how they're going to get to the doctor. And there's a bad court of appeals decision. The name of the case is Gilbert v. Fitz that says that if you give up your rights over the phone, if you tell that insurance company representative or that adjuster, yes, that check will take care of me. Will that you know, release your claims? Yes, it will. You're done. That's the end of the line for you, legally speaking. So Representative Johnson's bill, House Bill 1793, says that you cannot give up your rights over the phone. It says that an oral release of claims, saying the words out loud, um, is not enough for you to give up your rights. The insurance company needs to stop and slow down. They need to send you a written release so you have the time to study that language. Hopefully you have the time to go to your doctor and figure out what's going on with your health, what your course of treatment is going to be, um, what your medical damages are gonna be, because maybe that $5,000 check that they're dangling in front of you is off by a factor of five or six or 10. I mean, if, if you've got injuries that are gonna take some time to, to help heal, and it's gonna require you to have medical treatment over the course of the coming months, um, that $5,000 isn't gonna get the job done. And that means that you're not gonna have enough money to pay your doctors. We wanna make sure doctors are taken care of, hospitals are taken care of, most importantly, you are taken care of. And if you don't have enough money, then for many folks, they're gonna to have to get their medical care through our county hospitals, through charity care, or by walking into the ER and waiting in line for 14 hours with everybody else to try to get care there. And we as taxpayers all pay that cost. The at-fault party should pay the cost. They're the ones who imposed the cost when they created this, this, this wreck and created these injuries. So they morally, ethically, legally should be on the hook to pay for this. That's only right. So it's a great bill, 1793. I am happy to report that um, the bill passed the insurance committee unanimously, nine to nothing. So a wonderful job by a representative, Julie Johnson. We thank every member of the House Insurance Committee who voted for that bill and now moves on to the next step in the process. And let's make sure that we give it as much, uh, as much support as we can. We've got a letter up right now on our website, Kelly will post it, um, where you can take action. You can tell your lawmakers that you want to stop these swoop and settle schemes. You wanna make sure that insurance companies can't prey on people, that people have the time to stop and think about what they're doing and realize what they're doing. They need to get this in writing before they give up their rights and before they accept the offer from the insurance company. So make sure you sign that letter. It only takes a second to do it. Tell your friends and family to do it. Put it up on your Facebook page, uh, on your other social media channels. But we wanna get to a thousand letters if we can on, on that bill in support of that bill, because let's get that bill all the way through the, the process this time. Let's send it out of the house uh, with rocket fuel and get it over to the Senate, help the senators understand this is a priority for every Texan in every corner of our state. It's gonna help your constituents. So sign the letter in support of House Bill 1793 by Representative Julie Johnson. Okay, I wanna talk about the trucking bill. We've talked a lot about it, but that's because we have to do everything possible to stop this bill. It's House Bill 19. The bill is sitting in the House Calendars Committee right now, and it should be sitting in the House Calendars Committee because this bill is only going to reward the worst actors in our state. You know from previous conversations that we have the most dangerous roads in the entire country, the most deadly roads in the country, when it comes to large truck wrecks. Uh, Texas is kind of the NAFTA superhighway. We've got all kinds of traffic uh, coming through our state, big heavy trucks uh, barreling up I-35 and a lot of Texans lose their lives um, as a result. A lot of oil field uh, trucks as well, oil and gas trucks carrying heavy loads out in West Texas. Frankly, they kill a lot of folks in those communities. Over 600 Texans a year are losing their lives right now to these trucks. And the trucking companies are saying, gosh, our insurance rates are going up and we're getting sued. And so their, their solution 
isn't to improve their safety practices. Their solution is not to say that we're going to kill fewer people on our roads. Their solution is to take away your rights. If you or your family member or your neighbor is injured or killed in one of these wrecks, stop and think about that. That makes no sense. They are the bad actors. They're the ones killing and maiming Texans every day. And now they're telling the Texas legislature that the only way to solve this is to take away your legal rights. That is the exact wrong thing to do in this state. They could not be more wrong. If this bill passes in its current form, House Bill 19, I'm firmly convinced we will see more Texans lose their rights and and move their and lose their lives. More Texans will lose their lives as a result of this legislation. We have done everything that we can to educate the committee members, uh, the bill author, to give them a list of safety recommendations and measures that the trucking companies could be undertaking right now that would make our roads safer. They could have speed limiting devices on their trucks. They could have guards on the sides of their tractor trailers so that cars and trucks don't get wedged underneath and people don't get dragged and decapitated and crushed in these wrecks. It's not nice to talk about, but this is what happens. We can have more training and more support for drivers. We could do very basic things, but they're not doing that. Instead, they're trying to come up with this this bill that basically takes corporate negligence out of the picture. Juries will not know what the corporation did wrong. Um, It puts the the driver's actions on display here, and the corporation gets to hide behind their driver in essence. Uh, The corporation's negligence in terms of training and supervision, maintenance, all of that is taken out of the picture. That's swept under the rug. Juries and courts need all the facts on the table. Every relevant piece of evidence should be in front of them so they can weigh the credibility of the evidence and they can come up with the right decision in applying the facts to the law. But that's not what this bill does. So we need your help in stopping this bill. Over 4,500 of you have raised your voices right now, and that's great. You have sent letters into the Capitol saying, this is the wrong bill for Texas. This is going to make our roads more deadly. We need to get to 5,000. So we need your help. And now is the time. The bill is in the calendars committee. We need to put people pressure on the Capitol again and tell lawmakers this is the wrong thing to do. This is going to kill your constituents if you pass this bill in its current form. We need to oppose this bill in its current form. So please go to our website and sign the bill. I sign the letter telling lawmakers to oppose the bill. Um, And then we need you to do one more thing. We need you to tell your friends and family to sign the letter as well. That's how we get to 5,000 letters into the Capitol, because I know many of you watching or listening um, have already done this. So will you take the, the time to put this up on your social media platforms and make sure that people know in your world that this is going to hurt them? We've all had those white knuckle moments uh, on, on the highway where you get boxed in by these big trucks and you have nowhere to go. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to have more of those in the future if we can't change this bill. And bear in mind, it's not just 18 wheelers. This bill applies to Amazon delivery vans circling your neighborhood every day. Um, Uber, Lyft drivers, any commercial vehicle, the bill's going to apply to them and it's going to give them special privileges under our law. We don't believe that there should be special privileges for special interests. We should all live by the same set of laws. We believe in equal justice under the law. No one should be above or below the law. So please take action on House Bill 19 telling lawmakers to oppose it. We need you to raise your voices. Some related bills that the same lobbyists are pushing. So they're pushing House Bill 19, the trucking immunity bill. And then they've got these medical damages bills as well that they're pushing. One is Senate Bill 207. That bill um, received initial approval in the Senate uh, the other day. 
And um, and then the House Companion is House Bill 1617, 1617. So these bills are going to make it much harder and really impossible for many doctors and other medical providers to treat injury victims. So right now, today, it's difficult for many of us to receive medical care if you've been in a wreck. Through no fault of your own, someone T-bones you, you now find yourself injured, again, trying to get back to work. Even if you have health insurance, um, some medical providers don't want to help you because they don't want to deal with, frankly, the, the hurdles and the hassles that they're put through, whether it's from the insurance companies or the defense lawyers, they don't want to get involved. So right now we have a problem with getting medical care to injury victims. And Texas is one of the worst states in the country when it comes to patient access. We rank 47th in the country. We have the highest number of uninsured Texans. One in five adults in Texas have no health insurance at all. So already we have a really hard time getting medical care to people, especially injury victims. These bills are gonna make it even harder for folks. So under these bills, doctors are, are gonna basically have to go to court or get dragged into depositions to justify their medical charges, to justify their bills, to justify their medical treatment if they're treating an injury victim. We believe that doctors should be spending their time in exam rooms helping patients, and they shouldn't have to go to court. They shouldn't have to be pulled into deposition um, over these, these, these issues. There's a process under the law right now that keeps them from having to go to court. It basically allows them, uh, allows the parties to get an affidavit. So that's a sworn statement saying, these are my charges, this is my treatment. And the other side can contest that through a counter affidavit, their own sworn statement, but it has to be done by an expert, somebody who knows what they're talking about. And then those two can be weighed. The bills, as they're currently written, do away with that affidavit process in essence. And so they're not fair. And the result of that is more doctors are gonna be pulled into the legal process, taking their time away from treating patients. Dozens and dozens of doctors took their time away from their medical practices to come to the Capitol to testify against both bills. I was there. I also testified against both bills. You can watch my testimony on our YouTube uh, channel and uh, Kelly or Christian, if you will post that in the, in the stream here. So you can hear the arguments that we made to the Senate and to the House. But I mean, it was it was doctor after doctor in their white coats giving very powerful testimony saying, please do not do this to us. We don't need this. And it's gonna take time away from our medical practice. And we're trying to help patients. So we thank those doctors for their testimony. We have a goal of getting to 1,500 letters into the Capitol in opposition to Senate Bill 207 and House Bill 1617. You're doing great. We've already gotten to almost a thousand letters in, but now is the time to raise your voice. If you haven't already sent that letter, send it now, please. Um, you're gonna have the link here in the stream to do so. And again, tell your friends and family to do so because this could happen to any one of us. I got T-boned last year, driving home from the office. Uh, I had the green light. Um, a very nice lady from Houston ran the red light. She was, uh, she didn't know Austin Rhodes, she was trying to meet her daughter for dinner. She was looking at her phone and trying to follow the directions. She shouldn't have been doing that. She ran the red light, T-boned me. So it can happen to any one of us. And if we find ourselves in that position, we need to have access to medical care. Again, right now, even if you have a health insurance, it can be tough to get medical care. So we need to support our doctors. We need to support our hospitals here. We need to support our patients, our injury victims. You can do that by opposing these bills, House Bill 1617 and Senate Bill 207. Let's get to 1,500 letters into the Capitol. If you can do that by next week, you will have uh, our eternal thanks here from, from the Texas Watch team because lawmakers need to hear from you. They're hearing from those corporate lobbyists every day. Uh, the trucking industry has put a lot of money into trying to passing these bills. So don't let them beat you. Make sure your voice is heard. 
All right, let's talk about the auto repair bill. That is a really high priority for us. This is House Bill 1131 by Representative Travis Clardy, a Republican from East Texas, the Nacogdoches area. You may have watched my interview with him. Um, if we could post the link to the interview, you can get a good sense for Representative Clardy, a great member of the Texas House. Uh, we really appreciate him bringing this legislation. This is the bill that makes sure that you can have quality parts used in an auto repair at a quality shop of your choice, that the repairs are gonna be made according to accepted safety specifications. So the manufacturers know better than anyone how to repair the car or the truck that they developed and that they manufactured and that they put into commerce. They know, they know the vehicle, they designed it. And, and what we're saying is that repair facilities should follow those guidelines when they're making the repair. What's happening right now is insurance companies are playing like they know better as to how the repair should be done. They're, they're pretending like they know which parts should be used in making the repair. And really what they're doing here is they're trying to drive down their costs as much as possible. And, and you're the one who ends up paying the price because if you get into a, another wreck and your car or truck does not protect you in that wreck because that repair was made the wrong way, because corners were cut, because the wrong part was used, it may be a, a cheap aftermarket part that doesn't fit properly. A lot of these parts weigh less. I mean, they're, they're cheap parts. They are not like kind and quality, which is what you need. And your, your car or truck fails, you pay the price. My good friend, Marcia Sibashan, traveled all the way to the Capitol to give her testimony uh, about what happened to her and her husband, Matthew Sibashan, a really brave couple that represent the best of Texas. Their vehicle was, was incorrectly repaired due to some hail damage that they knew nothing about. That They were the subsequent purchasers. This was a used vehicle. They did a lot of research they saw the Carfax. The Carfax showed that this, this damage had not been repaired. So they didn't know. All they saw was there was a very smooth roof. Um, car looked good, Honda Fit. Uh, they're driving home for the holidays in a big pickup truck, a Toyota Tundra, hydroplanes. Comes across the median, hits them head on. And you all know in head-on collisions, so much energy is being transmitted because if you're going 70 miles an hour and the other car is going 70 miles an hour, that's like running into a brick wall at 140 miles an hour. So they're hit head on and their Honda Fit failed catastrophically. The roof had been glued on, unbeknownst to them. And it, the roof is a structural component. And when the roof does not hold, the sides of the car do not hold. And basically their, their vehicle turned into a death trap for them. They were trapped inside of their vehicle. It was on fire. Uh, Mr. Sibishan suffered horrible burns uh, that took many months to recover from. Mrs. Sibishan suffered very serious injuries as well. They were dragged to safety. Um, otherwise the car would have burned them alive. And Todd Tracy, uh, a national safety expert, a great lawyer in the Dallas area, exposed this wrongdoing through our court system. This is why our courts are so important. He did a forensic analysis and showed what happened to the vehicle, how it was glued, uh, how the roof was glued instead of welded in over 108 places as, as, the, as the Honda specs required. And our jury, in Dallas did their job and they sent a message to the repair industry that this will not be tolerated. You cannot cut corners like this in our state. You cannot kill and maim people. And so Mrs. Sibishan came and gave her testimony. Mr. Tracy gave his testimony. Um, the Auto Body Association of Texas are good friends who are the leaders. These are the body shops who are doing the job the right way. Uh, Chad Kiffey gave great testimony for them. 
And we thank everyone for coming and testifying. I testified on behalf of Texas Watch. Uh, so we, we need your help in getting that bill through the House Insurance Committee. We have a goal of getting a thousand letters into the Capitol. We're about halfway there right now. Take a minute to raise your voice in support of House Bill 1131. They need to hear from you right now so we can get that bill through the House Insurance Committee and on up to the House floor for debate and passage over to the Senate. Time is ticking. Now is the time. So please support House Bill 1131. Yesterday, I gave testimony in support of House Bill 2534. This is another great bill from a representative, Travis Clardy. It's a related bill that makes the insurance appraisal process fair. Years ago, the insurance companies fought to get appraisal clauses in the policies. Now, remember, these, these insurance policies, they write. We don't write them. We lawyers will tell you these are what are called contracts of adhesion. And kind of like it sounds, that means that you don't have much of a say. These are take it or leave it. They write the policy. They write the contract. You, you either have to take it or go to a different carrier. Now, now, the reality is almost every carrier has these appraisal clauses in their policies. So our position is, if appraisal is going to be in our auto policies, then let's make it fair. Let's make it a two-way street. Let's not make it one-sided. So either party should be able to start the appraisal process. The insurance companies shouldn't be able to just wait and hang back. And sometimes they wait months and years until they start appraisal, until they've forced you to sue them. Then they start the appraisal process. We don't think that's right. So the bill says, let's make it a two-way street. Either party can start the appraisal process. And let's get this process started soon in the dispute, because maybe we can get the dispute resolved that way. So once proof of loss is submitted, once you've gone to your auto insurance company and said, these are my damages, you know, this is the estimate for repair, and you, you submit your claim to the, to the auto insurance company, they've got 90 days, or you have 90 days to start appraisal. And in appraisal, you have your own appraiser, the insurance company has their appraiser. If those two appraisers cannot agree, a third appraiser is hired. They are called the umpire. We have an infographic that explains this process. Uh, Kelly, if you could post that. Uh, we also have a great video out. Um, if you could post that as well, it explains how appraisal works and how it should work. So you might be able to get this dispute resolved through appraisal. Appraisal talks about the amount of the loss, what the right number is to fix your damage, to, to get the repairs done on your vehicle. Great bill, very simple bill. Um, I appreciate the House Insurance Committee members' attention yesterday. We appreciate um, their time, and we hope that they will pass this bill as well through the House Insurance Committee. We'll have my insurance testimony clipped and up here in a matter of a day or two, so you can watch that as well, just to get a better sense for this issue. But check out the video there. We have so many videos up. I forgot to mention, we've got a new video up on the medical damages bills that we we're opposing, House Bill 1617, uh, SB 207, Senate Bill 207. If we could post the video link in, in the stream here, that would be great. So watch that. Publicize that to, to all your friends and family. Tell them to oppose House Bill 1617 and SB 207, but support House Bill 1131, the auto repair bill, and House Bill 2534, the fair appraisal bill. That's really important. All right, I want to talk about one more auto insurance bill. We're really focusing our efforts this session on making our roads safe. You can get more information on our hashtag safe roads page under the projects tab. We also have information up on the hashtag insurance reform page as well. This is the bill, House Bill 359 by Representative Charlie Guerin, Republican from my hometown of Fort Worth, a great member, a leader in the Texas House. That makes sure that you get what you paid for when you pay more to get uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. About 14% of the drivers on our roads right now 
are uninsured. They have no insurance at all. They are breaking the law because you have to have at least minimum limits coverage if you're on our roads. Now, many of the drivers on our roads just have the minimum limits coverage. So they are really underinsured if you stop and think about it because it costs more and more each year to repair our cars and trucks. And it certainly costs more and more to repair our bodies if, if we are injured in those wrecks. So this is when you pay more to buy more coverage to say, if the person who hits me, who's at fault, either doesn't have insurance or doesn't have enough insurance, I wanna buy this extra insurance to fill in that gap, to kick in and to cover me so I can get my vehicle repaired, so I can get my body fixed through medical care. There's a bad case, you've heard me talk about it before, from the Texas Supreme Court. It's been on the books now for a decade and a half. The name of the case is Brainerd versus Trinity that basically says that you can be forced to go to court and get a judgment and show that the other driver was at fault and that the, the money that's available is not enough before your insurance company is on the hook to pay you for your insurance policy, your UM, UIM policy, your uninsured motorist or underinsured motorist policy. Think about that. You have to hire a lawyer and you have to go through court. And with the backlog from COVID-19, this could take over a year, over two years. The point I made to the committee in my testimony the, the other week was these are really the highest deductible policies on the market right now. And you have no idea because it doesn't show that in the policy language at all. It doesn't tell you in the policy language and your insurance agent isn't telling you, hey, if you if you buy this policy, guess what? We don't have to pay you immediately and uh, we can force you to go to court. You may have to hire a lawyer out of your own pocket and you may have to take years, years to get a, a finding in court before we have to do anything. So Representative Guerin's bill simplifies and streamlines the process and it says that you don't have to go to court. You don't have to get a finding that your company has to pay up um, if liability is, is clear, if it's reasonably clear. And that tracks uh, the, the insurance code language as well. I don't mean to nerd out on you on this, but, but it's a very good bill and it's a very simple bill and, it, and its time has come. Last session, it passed the house with over a hundred votes it has over 70 co-authors. I mean, so much of the House is supporting this bill and we need it to pass the House Insurance Committee and get on to the House floor so we can get it over to the Senate and senators can have a chance to do the right thing and support House Bill 359. We thank two very brave women, Rebecca Rogers and Lonnie Berger, for coming and giving their testimony. Both of them had to go through this, this process, this court process that's unnecessary, that's unfair. And they gave very powerful testimony about what this was like for them and their families. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Lonnie, for coming and making your voices heard. This is why we do this work, to, to make sure that you can have your voice heard at the Capitol. And you gave such powerful testimony. So we thank you very much. Um, we have a goal of getting a thousand letters into the Capitol on this bill. We're right around 300 right now, so we've got some room to grow. Let's do that this week. Let's get to a thousand letters. Let's get this bill pushed through the House and over into the Senate so that your senator can have the chance to do the right thing. House Bill 359, please support it. Tell your friends and family to do so as well. All right. Um, remember, you hear me say this every time and I mean it every time. You are an influencer. You have a really powerful voice. We have so much content up. Check out our YouTube um, stream. Go to Texas Watch on YouTube and post our videos on, on your social media outlets, whether you're on Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, wherever you are. Please post those links. We've got a lot of posts running on those platforms as well. If you see them, like them. But beyond that, if you will take the time to share them, that expands the scope of our message and it gets your friends and family involved 
in, in this fight for what is right at the Capitol. So please share our content. That's so important. Um, take, take a minute to send it to your email contacts as well. I know that takes time, but it's really important. On House Bill 19, the trucking danger bill, that's going to affect so many people. It could be your friend or your family who's in the crosshairs of a, of a truck um, next year. And we need those those folks to make their voices heard. This is a state of almost 30 million people. We're trying to get 5,000 of you to raise your voices. So please help us in opposing that bill. So you have a voice, make it heard. We try to make it easy for you to do that. Sign the letters that are up on our ACT page. I went through a few of them right now, but we have so many more. I wanna tell you that you've made your voices heard on the veterans bills. Uh, the burn pits bills and good news those have both passed uh, the the house committee and they're headed to the house floor so this is house bill 3953 and 3957 by representative abel herrero uh, who's doing a great job supporting our burn pits veterans these are folks who are exposed to toxins overseas um, as our waste was pushed into open pits and and burned and our soldiers breathed it in. This is a great book if you want to learn more about this. The Burn Pits, The Poisoning of America's Soldiers by Joseph Hickman. Highly recommend this. The leaders on this issue are Burn Pits 360. Make sure that you check them out. Our dear friends Leroy and Rosie Torres are leading the fight on behalf of our veterans. Uh, Leroy was exposed to these burn pits uh, overseas uh, fighting for us. And so thank you for your support. Let's, let's make sure that more of you make your voices heard. We need to get those bills passed because they're going to fund the registry that the Texas legislature passed last session with your support that tracks the symptoms of our veterans who are suffering from this toxic exposure. Now we need to fund that registry so it can operate. And these bills, House Bill 3953 and 3957, get funding um, to the registry without affecting the state budget at all. These are voluntary contributions that you can make, and we we hope that you will. So I, I, I say that to tell you that your voice matters, and we can get these bills through the legislature with your help, so please do so. All right, always remember that knowledge is power. There is strength in numbers. Please join us uh, wherever we are, whether it's here on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, we're up on TikTok. We have a podcast. Some of you are going to be hearing this on our podcast in, in a day or two. So make sure that you've subscribed to our podcast. If you like what we're doing there, give us the highest rating. That helps us with the algorithms. Make sure that we show up in the feed. Uh, but we are here to support you, to help your voice be heard at the Capitol. I promise you the Texas Watch team is doing everything we can to do that. If you can support us financially at any level, even if it's $5, that helps us um, make your voices heard. So check us out at texaswatch.org slash donate. We thank you for everything that you do. We are here to help you. We're gonna keep burning it out here um, all the way through the end of the legislature. And um, just know that we're here for you. We'll be back with you here very shortly. Take good care, everyone. Take good care. All right, thanks. <laughs>